Is it possible that we can have even more fun? Yeah. Yeah. Only all the time? Only again and again? Only forever? We are uh, pretty much a, a vanguard organization here of people who really actually care about everything and put intention behind everything that we're doing. And I want to share with you today a, a little piece about this that some of you may be aware of. Some, I, a good friend of mine came and saw me yesterday and he had no idea about any of this stuff that I was really into. And so I don't really know because stuff filters out there on the internet. Some stuff's out there on YouTube. Anybody ever seen YouTube? This is my favorite thing now. We were watching uh, ghost videos on YouTube last night. That's a wild, there's some wild stuff on YouTube. But anyway, there's a lot of information that I'm putting out there. I'm not sure who's gotten what because a lot of it I just give away for free. There's a document that's been running around the internet for free that talks about a very specific subject that we're going to touch on here because this subject is kind of where we're all going because most of us here want to live over 80? Uh, A hundred? One hundred and twenty? Look, people, people have made it to a hundred on sixty cigarettes a day, on some kind of a thing of some kind of a fried animal muscle called meat. Never had a vegetable in twenty, thirty, forty years. I think if they ate well. There's a few of you in this audience right now. You might make it to 200 if you had the right technology, if you had the right angle. Now, I use the word technology because it's a word we're all intimately aware of. And this idea is, is that do you drive the same car you drove when you were 16? No. How many people here are still 16? Why, why did you change it? It got old. Let's get on with the new. Something better came along. And that's kind of what's happening with this whole field of nutrition. We're kind of like, yeah, that's old news. We're on to the new thing. That's old news. I mean, I love lettuce. You know that. But it's kind of old news. We know that lettuce and celery are good. We know that oranges and apples are good. We know that parsley is good. We know that uh, hemp seeds are good. But now we've got to get on to where this is all going and kind of drive into a new territory. That's why we came to this event, because some of you already know that raw food is good for you. How many people are confused? How many people don't know that? Just totally confused, not sure if they should eat a tomato or cook it. You ever seen this? Like, what about I read about lycopene? How many people have gotten this one before? Okay, check this out. You get five times as much lycopene if you cook the tomato. But you also get five times as much lycopene if you blend the tomato. And you know where that information comes from? Dr. Atkins' new diet revolution. He's out of court. He died of a heart attack. When his heart, you know, of course his diet stops heart problems. That's the usual routine in the diet world. So you could just tell him, well, you know what? I read in Dr. Atkins' New Diet Revolution that all you have to do is blend tomatoes. You get five times as much lycopene, but you don't explode every plant cell because of the heat. That's just a little angle you can use. We have discovered, actually, in, this, in our field, um, some pretty startling information. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'm kind of hardwired for this, for medical research, really. Both my parents are medical doctors. They met in medical school. Is anybody aware of that? I was conceived in a medical school library. In the corner, like there's one dark corner with like maybe one alternative health book. They tried to hide, they turned it around, left it in a corner. The whole situation is so beyond ridiculous, it's hard to even fathom. I mean, this is the darkest age of medical quackery ever. You know, doctors are like, Excuse me, I'm sorry. well, uh, looks like we've picked up a small cancerous growth in your breast, and um, we're going to start you on chemo right away. And they give you the whole doomsday report. Now, due to the internet, we get on the online now. We go over here, we go, oh my God, I could smile. I could do yoga. I could have the best day ever. I could jump in a spring. I could actually get into a waterfall. I could go to Hawaii and breathe fresh air. I could have fun again. I could have joy in my heart. 
I could actually drink the best water ever. And look at this whole diet I could be on. Next day, back to the doctor's office. Um, yeah, we're going to get you on the chemotherapy, and we just need you to authorize this right here. We need you to authorize that right there. Here's your insurance papers. Please authorize that. Uh, Doc, before I do that, I just want to ask you a question. Um, do you think this has anything to do with my diet? No, no, no. This has nothing to do with diet. But here, eat these pills. <laughs> Now they're bypassing the whole eating thing completely. They just inject it into people. What is it about doctors and injecting? They have to inject people with something. It's, like, it's kind of an archetype. I was, I was freaked out by needles and all that stuff when I was a kid because I was around it. I grew up, I went on, with my dad on house calls all the time. I, I did that for years. You know, like my mom would be doing her thing and my dad would be like, okay, you got to come with me. And we'd go on house calls together. So we'd see Mrs. Smith year one, year five, year eight. And uh, that's why I'm a raw foodist today. <laughs> Somewhere in my genetics, I'm hardwired for medical research. So what I'm going to kind of throw in here today is this whole uh, discovery that happened about 25 years ago. And it goes right to the root of everything that we've been talking about all weekend. And that is, you don't ask a fish about water. Why? <laughs> it's right there. You can't see it. The whole assumption of cooking. Why didn't we question that assumption? It's just too close. We couldn't, we just, it's just too close. Couldn't see it. It's right there. Then that all the significant scientific breakthroughs will come in that way in the future. That we became so technologically advanced that Sir Isaac Newton, Pythagoras, the greatest engineers, Archimedes, and every single Greek super philosopher could not figure out how that pyramid was built. Not even close, not to get to even base one. But here's some retired Flint, Flint, Michigan construction worker figures it out. That's the kind of world we live in because it's so obvious we can't see it. Well, this is one of those. And it's one of those I think that once you, once you hear this and you turn it over and you start looking for it and you start seeing it out there, it will, it will just resonate. And it actually eventually you'll go, okay, um, we're, changing, we're changing the road. We're going this way now. Because what's been discovered is that chief recycling organism of all mammals, reptiles, amphibians, birds, has been discovered. When I was about 14 years old, I remember reading a science article. I, I grew up very scientifically minded. Everything was about science, read this, that, the other thing. That's why I don't believe in that stuff anymore. And it said this that there was evidence of arthritis in dinosaur bones. <laughs> Fossilized dinosaur bones, evidence of arthritis. And I thought, even then, at a young kid, I knew it was the food. I think intuitively, I was like, no, 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 di you know, dinosaurs aren't eating junk food. They're, you know, it's human diseases are caused by the food that people eat. I mean, I think at a young kid, I even knew that. And I remember th thinking that thought. I also remember thinking one time after eating chicken that I'd been poisoned when I was 14. <laughs> but you probably thought that too. Anyway. So I thought, my God, this is really interesting. Here's what happened. Over a period of years, I, I, I always had an ear for that. What is it that actually takes out a wild turtle that can live to be 300? What will finally get it out of there? What about an eagle that can live to be over 100? What finally takes it out? What really gets people in the end? And if you've ever studied heart disease, has anybody ever seen a Diet for All Reasons, um, Dr. Clapper's video where they open up the heart artery and all that, like, milky pus that looks like a McDonald's milkshake comes out. 